the Wagga Wagga Grains Research Update, Steve Marcroft presented the latest blackleg research and management advice, starting with the new SDHIC treatments hitting the market. So in Australia, we've had C treatments for the last 20 years, and we've the current one people would know as Jockey. It's a DMI fungicide, and it's been a fantastic product. Um, however, in 2020, we've got the new SCHIC treatments coming out. And the new SCHIC treatments are an excellent product. They've got a few advantages. They have a high efficacy against blackleg, so they do a better job at controlling the disease. They also have a slightly longer longevity, so they'll protect the seedlings for slightly longer into the growing season. But probably one of the main factors is they don't have any seed health issues. So with the old DMIs, they used to do a bit of damage to the seedling. They used to reduce the hypercotyl length, reduce the vigor of the seedlings a little bit. And the seed companies really didn't like them because it meant you couldn't maintain stocks from one year to the next. The moment you put your seed treatment on, you really had to sow that seed. Um, so these SEHIs, are really going to be a big product for the canola industry. We expect you know, a full switch over from the old DMIs to the new SDHIs over the next couple of years. This shift to new chemistries highlights the importance of fungicide use stewardship to reduce the risk of resistance evolving, which is a known issue with the DMI fungicides. So we've been surveying canola paddocks. We've just done 286 paddocks where we've looked for fungicide resistance. And what we found is we've got around 20 to 30% of paddocks which are showing some resistance to the DMIs. So that's the Jockey and the Intake and the Presaro, those types of products. Um, but fortunately in our screening we haven't found any resistance whatsoever to the new chemistries. So no tolerance whatsoever to the STHIs or the strobulurins. So that's really the positive news on that angle. So what we know from overseas experience is the SDHIs lose resistance quicker than the DMIs which we have been using. So the fact that we've got DMI resistance in Australia means that there's probably going to be some resistance to the SDHIs turning up over time. So the current recommendation which has just come out this year is that if you are using an SDHI C treatment going forward to not use an SDHI as an earlier foliar. So in that earlier foliar, which is somewhere between the four and 10 leaf growth stage, to not use an SDHI to use a DMI at that growth stage. One of the main issues with blackleg is how shifts in farming practices have changed how the disease operates. Interestingly, in 2010, we saw the first um, paddock of what we now call upper canopy blackleg infection. Um, and what it was, was just the traditional cankers that we saw at the crown all of a sudden were occurring up on the branches. And we started doing some GRDC investment work in 2016, trying to get a better handle on it. And what we've realised is this new type of black leg has actually been causing some very significant yield losses. We're regularly measuring somewhere between 20 and 40% yield loss when upper canopy gets bad. So what we believe is happening, um, we've got a few years of results on this now, is that changing farming systems has meant the crops are just flowering so much earlier. And because they're flowering earlier, they're pushing into the late winter period where it is cold and wet and the spores are being released and it's good, you know, good timing for infection. So in the past, crops were vegetative in that growth stage or that timing of the year, and now they're reproductive. So when they're vegetative, we're seeing leaf lesions, which lead to crown cankers. Now we're seeing direct infection up onto the flower, stems and branch. And that's really what we term upper canopy to be. In terms of reducing the risk of upper canopy infections, growers have a few options. The first thing is probably to actually target your timing of flowering, the commencement of flowering. So if your crop, if you've sown early and you've got an early maturing cultivar and your crop starts certainly flowering in July, we know that's really high risk for upper canopy. Whereas if you can target into August, the first week of August for instance, we know we get a lot less infection periods and you can really avoid a lot of the issues. So that's probably the main factor. The second factor is the genetics of the cultivars. So we know that if you have effective major gene, your actual crops will be protected. Unfortunately, most of our cultivars don't have effective major gene resistance. Um, and I, also, unfortunately, the crown canker resistance we see in the black leg ratings doesn't correlate with upper canopy. So a lot of that um, black leg resistance rating material that farmers will have tells them how much crown canker they're going to get. But that's been bred for crown canker resistance, it hasn't been bred for upper canopy. So a lot of cultivars, if they don't have effective major gene resistance, are totally susceptible to upper canopy. And I think this is actually one of the reasons why we've seen big yield responses to our fungicides, because it's like spraying a completely susceptible crop. But if a crop is flowering early and little leaf lesions are visible, spraying a foliar fungicide may be the best course of action. 
We've seen the, um, the sclerotinia fungicides supplied at 20 to 30 percent bloom have had excellent control of upper canopy. The question for us really is how do you get an economic response from those fungicides? Sometimes in some situations the economic response to those fungicides is really really large. We've seen 20 30 percent yield um, increases, other cases it's not so large. What we're beginning to realise now actually with some more um, detailed GRDC investment is that it's potentially not just the growth stage of the plant which is important when the infection occurs, it's also the timing of the year. So what we're seeing is for instance in Horsham last year in late August we had rainfall, we saw lots of um, lesions, we saw flower infection, we were very confident we are going to get big yield returns but in a lot of cases we didn't. And what we're seeing now is that if the infection occurs later in the year there's simply not enough time for the infection to actually get in and cause the damage. The actual disease needs around potentially around a thousand hours thermal time from infection to harvest to actually get inside the vascular tissue and cause the damage and block the moisture basically uptake by the plant. So you can still get the disease occurring later in the season but it's quite superficial. It doesn't actually get inside and destroy the vascular tissue. Whereas if you get it early enough in the growing season the disease has enough time to actually really get inside the plant and cause that, um, that damage and then cause the yield loss. But it's not just early sowing that has changed the way black leg operates. Intero sowing has also ramped up disease pressure. We've also seen that the way the black leg actually responds on the canola stubble has also changed. So intero sowing has meant that the stubble is maintained in a standing position and we know from the sexual reproduction that the stubble has to stay moist for the actual sexual reproduction to occur and the spores to be released. So what we notice now is that where people into row sow, the stubble stays dry and it doesn't release spores early in the season. But what we see is more spores being released later in the season, which is another reason we think maybe why we have this later season infection that wasn't an issue 20 years ago. The other thing we're seeing is that all our work we did 20 years ago showed that 99% of spores are released in the year after the canola crop. But what we've realised now, and we've been counting many millions of spores, is that with a full standing stubble retention system, that all the spores aren't being released in the year after. A lot of the spores are now being released two years into the future. So if you're in a farming system where you're growing a canola wheat canola rotation, it actually means you're growing under a lot of high disease pressure. And we think these are some of the drivers we probably didn't really know at the time, but it's why we're seeing you know, greater returns with fungicides, etc., because we've just growing our crops, unfortunately, under more disease pressure. Steve Marcroft from Marcroft Grains Pathology. And this video is one in a series of update videos recorded at the 2020 GRDC Grains Research Updates. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.